Welcome back. It feels like it's been a, a long time. It has been a long time. So this gap between six and seven has been maybe a couple of months. I think the last one came out before my birthday, the end of March. We finished the last episode with breaking through to next door, getting the keys for the door and opening up the doorway through to the what will be the machine room. Because at this point, kind of really, for the first time, appreciated what had gone on next door up to this point. It's easy to come into this room and now think... You don't think about the floor, you don't think about the walls being painted. It's just a room with a floor and, and some walls. It's, it's hard to appreciate all the work that's gone into it because of where we started, because of what this building was when we got here. So I had a couple of things that I wanted to finish up in this side before I really cracked on with next door. This setup here, I don't have any footage of putting it in, but it's something I wanted to show you. It's a, so you see on this side a speed controller. That speed controller is for a fan. So next door to this is the boiler, hence the name, the boiler shed. And it was the landlord's idea to take a block out to kind of take some of that residual heat. This room is fully insulated, so it does get warm in here. Rather than just doing that, I decided to fit a vertical pipe which would draw warm air from the top of the room, a little inline fan, and push it into the bottom of my room, just behind my workbench. That fan has a switch and a speed controller, so I can control it from my side of the wall, and the power is wired into a socket, this side of the wall. I don't yet know whether that makes much difference, whether whether that was worthwhile, but it can't be hurting. I imagine when it gets really cold again, I can leave that on overnight and it might just take the edge off. Next job was just to, to fill up these vents. These vents, um, although they are angled with the pitch of the roof, rain does seem to make its way in when it's quite windy. Um, I came in one morning and there was a a wet stripe about the width of, of the middle sheet of ply all the way up the room. Obviously now I've got books in here, I've got tools in here, benches and a wooden floor. I can't have that so I decided to fill them all with foam. This does feel a bit like a temporary solution but it's fine for now. My landlords were kind enough to let me have this this half of the unit a little earlier than we, we initially planned. Hence there was this Pile of, pile of crap. Um, so the first job was just get that all into the centre so we could paint the walls. We can get to the walls to paint them really. Um, it wasn't until a few days later that I managed to get all that rubbish gone. It was a really daunting time, this. Um, it felt a little like starting again on something that had already been so much work. But thankfully... I got the boys back involved, I got mum and dad involved and managed to crack on with it and it, it really didn't, didn't take too long to come together this side. I knew how much paint I needed to buy, I knew roughly how long it would take. We managed to do all of the coats on all of the walls in a weekend, in two days, um, with, a, with a good workforce, kind of did shift work, six or seven of them, really couldn't do it without them. I can't imagine trying to paint that many breeze blocks. You can see in this shot, this room is actually quite a bit lighter than the other room. Not something I'd really considered before moving in. Um, it has four of those nice big skylights, whereas the bench room, this room, only has the two. So it doesn't actually seem to get a little more light. Of course, getting the yellow involved again. I wanted to do more yellow in this room, I couldn't really decide, um, so I ended up painting random blocks. <laughs> so, we're all painted, lay the floor. I'm not going to show a lot of this, it's the same process as next door. I decided not to lay power under this floor, because that will probably come later on. It's not too bad to pull the sheets back up and lay the cable, so... I don't know the layout of machines or this room is a little less planned so I decided not to do that for, and for the sake of getting this floor down quickly. 
it didn't take me a huge amount of time. Luckily, I had my dad helping me with the insulation, which really helped it get along. Um, the rooms aren't too far out square, actually, so it, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too much wastage either. Um, they're almost exactly five sheets wide. Although, of course, never going to be exactly. It's about 35 mil um, wider than that. This was really exciting. The next step of the workshop. Now the floor is down in the machine room. We can start looking at some machines. So I went to browse some extractors and bought a big bandsaw. You'll see that later on. While I had rented the van um, that day, I decided to go back to the old workshop. You see it here, down the side of mum and dad's house. And pick up some of my small machines. Kind of give them a home and start emptying out that workshop for, a, for the last time. So this is an old planer and my old lathe just about fit down the side of the house and into the back of the van. This day felt like a lot of progression actually because we had the van for one day and managed to kind of transform the room quite a bit, kind of fill it out and empty the other workshop. I took up this opportunity to take some, some of the bigger pieces of timber as well um, that I had stored in the old workshop. Thankfully I had Fox to help me here um, unload the van. Everything we carried is really heavy, so this was quite a, quite a tiring day. Um, and the, the two of us trying to communicate how to back a van up to the workshop is quite funny to watch. So this bandsaw weighs um, about 250 kilos, about a quarter of a ton, um, and he's all one piece like most bandsaws are, so there wasn't much in the way of making it any lighter. Fortunately this one was the display model at the moment because of Brexit and Covid and various other things. Machinery seems to be really hard to get hold of. This was the last one in the country until September. Um, so it's the display model, so it's got all the nice extra features like this, this wheel kit which was pretty crucial to me because I don't, my process doesn't revolve around machinery. I've never used a lot of machinery in my process. It's not something I'm particularly interested in. So I know I'll be shuffling this room about a little bit. I haven't quite decided what I want this room to be. So having that as mobile with one person was quite important. Once the bandsaw was in, um, it felt like there was suddenly some items of value in here um, so along with um, fixing the locks and doing all of that I could put the put some blinds up just a little bit of privacy makes it feel a little more secure I looked at made to measure blinds ridiculous money these ones from B&Q a couple of quid um, bamboo things and you can cut them with a saw so next time we'll get into I'd like to go through a little bit of setting up that bandsaw. It's the Laguna 18BX. It's a very nice machine. Um, and I'll get a little bit into setting that up. And we'll start looking at the, at putting a timber rack on the wall as well. So exciting stuff coming up. Like I said, there's been a gap between these episodes and um, no particular reason for that. I've been starting getting to work in the workshop, been busy planning for teaching and that kind of thing. So, it's been a busy time, but I'm hoping to catch up with these films on the next few, in the next few days and maybe release a few shorter episodes for the sake of getting them out quicker. Thank you so much for watching again, coming back. Um, I, I enjoy making these films and I'm going to do my best to make more time.